So for this morning's practice, the next part of this practice is um, mainly seated and floor postures. So before we come to seated, you might like to do a down dog or a uttanasana stretch. Otherwise, when you're ready, please fold a blanket so everyone can sit on a blanket and um, have a um, couple of bricks nearby for Dandasana. This is our first seated posture. Oh, and excuse me, I forgot to say, possibly a yoga belt. We'll see. We will see. Okay, so danda means stick. Please remove the flesh away from the sitting bones and bend the knees. Staff pose. Flare the toes. Keep the chest up. Think of the shoulders, hips in alignment. Stay focused. Keep the gaze at the toes, hands behind, lengthening the chest. And then if available, extend the legs out. With an option to place something underneath the backs of the knees. Could be a blanket or bricks. And then to engage the addu adductors, you can place a brick between the thighs. Or imagine you're squeezing something between the thighs. Keep flowing the toes, inhalation. So the legs are really active, very strong. Exhalation, that tailbone is rooting down to the ground. The other option is to place the brick, not between the palms, but more between the fingers, so to activate the upper part of the body. And the brick can be gently overhead. Draw those front ribs in and up. Soften the shoulders. And keep gazing at the big toes. Keep the length in the torso. And gently releasing the brick down. Both bricks down. So from Dandasana, we'll come into some seated postures. So seated tree pose is next. So let's extend the left leg out and bend the right knee out to the side. Janu Shirshasana, head to knee pose. Or imagining the head is towards the knee. So I'm supporting my knee with a brick there so the joint isn't hanging. I'm going to turn my belly to the left leg. I'm going to take an inhalation, reach the arms up. And then gently bring the torso down, the belly down towards that left leg. But I'm keeping the chest upright. Now the hands can stay here, so pressing into the fingertips. We did use the brick before, so that's another way of keeping the awareness in the upper body. Take an inhalation to lengthen and expand. Keep flaring the toes. And the torso, the belly is gently coming down, possibly towards the left knee. Bend that left knee as much as we like. Option to hold on to the foot. So I spoke about the belt before, it's very soft. Hold on the belt. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhalation. I like to just lengthen up and then take an exhalation fold further into Janu Shishasana. I've got an external rotation in that back thigh. On the inhalation, let's lift up. Reach the hands behind. Open the chest and then come back into Dandasana. Going to bend the left knee, hug that left leg in. Turn the left knee out to the side. 
And remember to have some support for that left knee if we need it. Flare the toes on the right foot. So I gave a few different options on that left leg. So the choices are lifting up hands either side, holding onto the brick activates the upper body and the arms and the shoulders as well. Pull the belt. Bending the knee as much as you like, inhalation to lengthen. And take the exhalation to expand a little bit further. Breathing in, keep flaring the toes. Take an exhalation, fold a little bit further. So I'm finding if I'm using the belt, I can feel that more so in the hamstrings, but I'm avoiding locking that right knee. So for me, I need to lift up a little bit on the inhalation and then gently come forward, keep the torso long. So it's not about collapsing all the way down, it's keeping the gaze towards the, the toes there, Janu Shidshasana. Release the belt, lift up, open the chest. So the next posture we're coming into is Paschimottanasana, which is essentially this posture with both legs straight. So if that just doesn't quite work, stay in Janusha Shasana for a few seconds in each side again. Otherwise, back to Dandasana, remove the flesh away from the sitting bones. Let's have a bend in the knees, open the chest, and we can hold on to the outer feet or the calves, then we can drape forward a little bit. And slowly, the legs might lengthen forward. But this way gives you the option to keep a bend in the knees. And sometimes I just like to fold the arms at the backs of the knees. And then I've got this contact with the torso and the belly. Keep flaring the toes, please. Paschimottanasana, this is known as west side facing posture of the body. So you can join me by lifting up and then let's fold back down. Remember, bend the knees as much as we like. Inhalation, flaring the toes, exhalation. So the forward bends are helping to quieten the mind. Breathing in. Lifting through the torso, breathing out. So Paschimottanasana, west side facing of the body. So um, in yoga we have these opposites. So because we've been facing the west side of the body, um, which might not be so nice for some of us on our lower back, we need to do the opposite, which is east side facing posture. And... Um, couple of options here, bending the knees, this is tabletop version, open the chest. You can lift up through the thighs and lift the chest, so that's tabletop, so you can just watch first what I'm doing there, lifting up into tabletop. Then the next version, if we're coming into, is Purvottanasana, the Sanskrit name, east side posture, big toes touch, tailbone long, Internally rotating the thighs and uh, gently lifting up. So it's almost like we're coming into a prone back bend. Now turn the hands out to the side, a little bit wider. So option for tabletop or Purvottanasana, east side posture, lifting with the thighs, pressing into the big toes, please, lifting up. Big inhalation, lifting up, up, up. Exhalation, lift up higher. Two, three, four, and five. Lowering down slowly, taking a pause. Notice how we are. I find, just as a test, it's easier for me to come back into Paschimottanasana a little bit because it's just the opposite action might not be the case for everybody. So, back to Dandasana. Again, please 
sitting on a blanket just to give your pelvis a little bit of a lift. And I'm just going to sit against this door here just so you can see me. Um, if you are actually near a, a door or a wall, for this posture, Baddha Konasana, bound angle posture, sitting on a brick just against the wall, just gives you a little bit more of a lift. And um, for me here, it's giving a little bit more of a length to the spine. So you don't necessarily need the wall, but just that extra height has given me a bit more space for my hips. So this is Baddha Konasana, bound angle posture. The feet are in prayer position and the knees are out. For a kind of stretch, have the feet forward. And remember, you can always have support, support for the outsides of the knees. So Baddha Konasana. I'm just coming off the brick there, but I'm still on the blanket. And then I'm lengthening through the torso. Press the outer edges into the floor. Keep flaring the toes, that'll just help to protect the knees. Take an inhalation to lengthen and expand. As we take an exhalation, let's open the feet. Imagine the feet are like a book. So you're opening the feet and just notice the connection to the pelvis there. Now some people then like to come forward, pressing the elbows into the inner thighs. And you could come forward, but for quite a lot of us, and sometimes for me, the lower back doesn't quite like it. So the most important thing is to stay grounded here. Imagine there's that external rotation in the upper thighs. So you can be sitting upright, focused on the breath or slowly coming forward. Please be mindful of the knees here and the tightness in the hips gives you an indication of where the knees will be breathing in. Take the exhalation to bring you further forward. Baddha Konasana, bound angle posture. So the bind is when we're holding onto the ankles or the feet. And then lift up, lift the chest, lift through the heart. Please take a pause, come back to seated. We're coming into Upavishta Kanasana, which is wide-legged seated forward bend. So just wait for my guidance here. Back to Dandasana, traditionally, and then opening one leg out and then the other leg out. And uh, just to remind us, we did this actually uh, standing. We do this quite a lot standing. But flare the toes, bend the knees as much as we like. Same things apply. Support at the back of the legs. Keep the chest open. Hands behind the chest, keep the spine alert. Breathing in through the nose, please. Breathing out. Keep flaring the toes. Keep the tailbone lengthening down. So a couple of options here. As we hold on to the hips, yeah? Because it's this idea, again, it's an external rotation with the thighs. Will give us more grounding. This will help ground us. And then the length is through the torso. So you might come forward, but uh, just be very mindful. Keep the length in the torso. Just keep the hands where they are. Bring one hand forward first. Notice how that is. Then bring the other hand forward. Keep lifting through the chest rather than collapsing down to the floor. Keep lifting, keep lifting, breathe in. Another thing I like to do is lift up, 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 and then fold back down. Keeping the chest open. 
And from here, you might hold on to the outsides of the feet or the big toes with the peace fingers and draw the elbows up. So keep the length in the torso and the breath in through the nose and the breath out. Inhalation, exhalation. Slowly, slowly coming back in. Just gently massaging the inner thighs. Bring the legs back into this Dandasana position. And back to Dandasana here, coming into a seated spinal twist, Ardha Matsyendrasana. Bend the right knee, place the right foot to the outside of the left thigh. I'm just bringing that left leg in a little bit. Clasp the hands so the arms are extended and hook the left elbow around, lengthen through the torso, place the right hand behind, take an inhalation. As you take an exhalation, open through the right side of the chest, press into both feet, expanding on the inhalation. As you take an exhalation, notice that the chin is gently parallel. Gaze can be forward to the side or out to the right shoulder. Gently turning from the belly, rooted to the ground, press firmly into the feet. So the twists are meant to be massaging the organs when releasing the spine, essentially, releasing the hips. Look the opposite way. Counter twist here, please. Come back into Dandasana. Bend the left knee. Now really hug the left leg in. This just protects the knee. Left foot around the outside of the right thigh. Just bringing that leg in a little bit. Sit onto the sitting bones, clasping the hands in front of you. Bring the, hook the right elbow round that left knee. Then I've got this length here. Place the left hand behind. On the inhalation, lengthen. And on the exhalation, just gently turning from the belly, just turning from the upper part of the torso. The inhalation, awareness. The exhalation, mindfully twisting a little bit further. Focus on that inhalation for the length. Keep pressing into both feet. Gently turning, gently opening. Keep that chin parallel and open through the left side of the chest. Now release the head in the opposite direction. Take a gentle counter twist to the other side. And let's go back to Dandasana. And a final seated posture for now is Navasana. But I'm just going to come into Navasana via a little sequence with some of the postures we've already been doing. So come into Dandasana, have the knees bent, place the hands at the back of the knees, come into Baddha keeping the chest open, inhalation, taking an exhalation. Bring the knees together, lift the legs up, lower the legs down, inhalation, Open the arms, the chest, bend the knees, fold into a little Paschimottanasana. Reach the hands up, up, up. And then bring the hands behind us, bring the knees to the belly, lifting into a little tabletop. And then again, extend the legs out, Dandasana, reaching up, Paschimottanasana, folding forward, not too far down. Bend the knees. Hands at the back of the knees, Baddha keep the chest open. Big breath in, take a big breath out. Closing the knees and then gently the heels, have you noticed they're lifted off the floor and I'm opening through the chest. So you can stay in this Navasana or come back into that sequence where you lower the heels down, come forward and then into Baddha Konasana. If for those of you that are ready for Navasana, keep a bend in the knees, keep the chest open. 
Lifting both feet up, flare the toes, lift the hands up, tailbone long. Inhalation, exhalation. Gently turn the torso, the hands to the left. Gentle twist out for Navasana. Lifting up and then turn to the other side. Keep lifting through the chest. Lower the knees, the feet down. Bring the feet into a diamond position. Roll forward into a Baddha Konasana, but a softer version. And just gently rocking side to side here. And just taking a pause, let's come on to the back. Hug the legs in, please. Hugging the legs in. Let's bring the feet together in prayer position. Heels pressing, the knees are out. Almost in this Baddha tailbone long, lift the forehead, nose, the chin and the chest. Release back down. Hugging the legs back in. And then lifting the heels so they're in line with the knees, reach the arms up so it's a supine, <coughs> means reclining, so a reclined Navasana. Lift the head, the heart, lift the arms up, and then turn the torso to the left, so you're onto the left shoulder, flaring the toes. Come back to the centre, and then across to the other side. And hugging those legs in. And then I'd like you to roll onto your belly, please. You can come there via down dog or cat or child. So we're coming towards our final sequence. I'm going to make a pillow with the hands Roll the hips side to side. Take a pause there. Just notice how we are, how we're feeling. Come on to the forearms, please. And um, sphinx pose. Elbows are underneath the shoulders and spread the hands. Now I'd like you to actively draw, press into the pubic bone and draw those front ribs in and up, some of the ribs at the front of the back of the body and then open through the heart. This is your baby cobra. Keep pressing into the elbows, keep the collarbones open tailbone long, rooting towards the heels, but you want to keep drawing those front ribs in and up. So imagine you're like the Sphinx in, in, a, in Egypt on the pyramids. So that's baby cobra. We're now coming into Bhujangasana, cobra posture. Bring the forehead down to the mat. So they're right in line with the middle of the chest and the heels of the hands are by the ribs. Draw the elbows in, flare the toes. So we're in prone postures now where we're opening up the front of the body. So gently, gently just kind of brushing the forehead, nose, the chin and the chest, lifting up and lift the hands off the floor. So we know we're using the right part of the back muscles, lift up a little bit more. Inhalation, another inhalation, and release back down. Take a pause, rock those hips side to side. Pausing there. Shalabhasana, locust position. Bringing the palms onto the mat. And then slowly lifting the forehead, nose, the chin and the chest. 
you have the option to lift the arms, lift the feet, tailbone long, lifting up. So use the whole of the spine, keep the tailbone lengthening, gently flare the toes a little bit, and then release back down. Just make a pillow with the hands. Take a pause there, please. Take a pause. And notice how that is for the spine. And this is a good time for those of us that feel, okay, I might need a little cat stretch or a child stretch before we come into the final prone posture. Just notice how you are feeling. So those prone postures have been building us up to this um, key pose, Danurasana. Danurasana, it means bow posture. So we're looking the body in the shape of a bow. Exactly as we've done before, palms by the thighs, extend the arms. Flex the knees this time, flare the toes. And then for Danurasana variation, the same again, brushing the forehead, nose, the chin and chest, lift the head and the heart, an option to lift the arms up and bring the arms out to the side. Now lengthen the tailbone down. And we'll have an idea of how that is. Lower back down. This time, we have the option as if we're going to grab hold of the heels, but we're not going to actually do that. So lift the arms a little bit higher and lift up a little bit more. We're going to bring the thighs into action. So option to just place the hands onto the floor and lift the thighs, that's a bit kinder. Otherwise, lifting the thighs, lifting the arms, and here you might grab hold of the ankles. Keep flaring the toes, lift the chest, lifting up, up, up. Big inhalation, lift the thighs. Evenness in the spine, exhalation. Release down, please. Make a pillow with the hands and let's bend the left knee out to the side. Bending that left knee to the side. Take a pause there. Taking a pause. So these postures are really getting the heart rate going. They're hopefully strengthening the spine. But then we have that juxtaposition of a sense of release and also a sense of energy. Please change sides. So bend the other knee out to the side. You're making a pillow with the hands and just to be clear when you're bending that knee out to the side, it can be like um, a tree tree pose or like a frog. So what you're trying to do here is make some space for the sacrum. It's known as a variation of Nakrasana, crocodile posture. So really taking that time to pause here time to feel the benefits from the practice and release now from prone please come back into a, a cat stretch so we're staying in this cat where we're spreading the fingers and there's a length in the tailbone keep that length in the tailbone you might come into this cat cow stretch you might prefer to have the big toes touching and then release into child's pose. 
it, again it just depends how the spine is feeling and how you are and of course there's always the option for down dog so just taking some time before we come to our final couple of postures and then please come onto the back again the knees are bent and bring the arms into a cactus shape and shuffle the bottom to the left and let the knees roll to the right side Notice the openness in the chest. And hopefully a release for the hips. And this pose uh, is known as Jathara, which is a belly twist posture. It's something that we can really do when we first wake up or before going to bed or anytime there's aches for our lower back. Now come back to the center. Shuffle the bottom across to the right side and let the knees roll to the left. They don't have to touch the floor. I know there's an option to bring the left foot onto that right knee, but I, I prefer not to do that, but sometimes that's always a, something that people do. I'm trying to keep this sense of openness in the belly and the chest. And I'm just leaning to the outer edge of the left foot. I'm coming into the centre now. I'm going to hug the legs in, press the hands onto the shins, widen the knees apart. I'm going to flare the toes here. And just gently extend through the heels, lifting the legs spreading the toes and then bending the knees hugging the legs in almost as if I'm coming into a happy baby pose so you have the option to hold on to the backs of the knees or the hands to the outsides of the feet the knees are uh, wider than the torso so the knees are quite wide apart flaring the toes. So you can play around with this. So you can lengthen the tailbone and spread the toes and bring the hands and the feet to meet so you've got this um, stretch. But otherwise if you're flowing you can lift the tailbone. Let's just play around with that. So. Uh, we were talking about this and actually I'm just finding at this moment lengthening the tailbone down and spreading the toes and keeping the hands and the feet active is really helpful. Now please release the feet back down. Always just notice how you are in between postures. There's something you need to do re to release. Or is there something you need to do re to release? Is it just a habit we've got into? Next posture is your bridge pose and for bridge I'd like you to I'm going to go through a couple of options here. I'm going to bend the knees and the knees and ankles are in alignment. Bring the hands so they grip onto the mat, really gripping the mat. So then you've got this awareness in the shoulders and the arms and pressing into the feet, lifting lifting, lifting, up, 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 lifting with the thighs, lifting with the chest, tucking the shoulders underneath, pressing into the feet. Don't move the neck, please. Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose. So remember a bridge has two sides. Keep the tailbone towards the knees. Inhalation, take an exhalation. Breathe in, 
Lift a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Release back down slowly with control. Controlling the movement, please. Taking a pause. So we have the option to come back into bridge. This time, instead of gripping onto the mat, we'll place the hands down and lift higher with the thighs. Press into the palms and press into the arms and press firmly into the feet and lifting the tailbone. For those of you that are coming into wheel, bring the fingertips by the shoulders, sorry, lower the spine back down and then come onto the top of the head and lift up with the thighs. But I'm going to stay in bridge pose. And you can clasp the hands in bridge if you're in bridge with me. Pressing the baby fingers down. So if the baby fingers don't reach down, unclasp the hands. Keep lifting. So perfect time to really fill the lungs. Take that inhalation, lifting. Imagine the tailbone drawing towards the knees. Imagine you're squeezing a brick between the thighs. Release the hands, release all the way down, all the way down. And then hugging those legs in. Hug those legs in. So actually that's just my habit. I automatically hug the legs in. You might not want to. Okay, otherwise a windscreen wiper with the legs. Side to side. So if you have a brick or a block for the sacrum, place that underneath the lower back. So if, I, if we were doing a longer session, I would come into shoulder stand here, but this time let's just extend the legs up. You can do this against the wall. We're staying for 10 breaths. You can bend the knees. This is a version of Viparita Karini. It's draining the legs. It's good for people who do running and for a lot of us who are walking at the moment. And be aware of that inhalation and the exhalation. Let's say, let's say that's five counts. Quieting the mind. Exhalation. Inhalation. Exhalation. And then ten. Bend the knees, please. Bring the feet down to the ground. Releasing the block. We're coming into Shavasana. Relaxation posture, it's known as. But in Sanskrit, it's Shavasana. But most of us know it as a relaxation posture. I'm just releasing the knees side to side. So I'm giving you the option of, could be hugging the legs in, or something else that we need to do for child's pose. Sorry, what I meant by that was sometimes people like to do a child's pose or a different stretch, but after you've done your final bits and bobs, find a comfortable place that you can relax in. So comfort could mean a blanket at the back of the head. It could mean a bolster at the back of the knees or a rolled up blanket. 
could also be lying on your side. And if you lay on the side, you'd have one knee and ankle on the bolster. But for Shavasana, the posture to be perfected, comfort, optimum comfort, comfort is needed. And just the right temperature. Neither too cold, neither too hot. It's a good time to place layers on as the body temperature will cool as we settle. And as we settle, it could be a stretching through the heels and releasing the shoulder blades so there's a release in the armpit space between the armpits. And there's that sense of length in the torso. So the tailbone is rooting down towards the heels. Finding comfort. And then being aware of the surroundings. Take the surroundings in and then gently closing the eyes, softening the mouth, release the jaw. Notice as things settle, as the senses settle from the sounds, sight, any sensations of taste and touch. Allowing the senses to be, allow the mind to wonder with ease. Feeling the body on the mat. Imagine the body is like a rag doll, supported with space and a sense of ease. Feet is falling out. There's a heaviness to the legs and the arms, the torso and the head supported. The back of the body is completely comfortable. the entire body at ease. Notice the shape and the form of the body. And imagining a sense of symmetry, a line from the top of the head all the way down the midline between the heels. A sense of balance created in this supported Shavasana. back of the body settling, supported from the heels to the buttocks and the shoulders, the arms to the back of the head. And the forehead softens. The face and the chest the belly gently rising, gently falling. And then all the way down to the thighs and the feet. So this entire body back and front of the body is at ease. Observing softness. Softness to the forehead and the eyebrows, the eyes and the cheeks, the cheekbones, the ears, just the nose and the all the facial features, the lips, the mouth, 
softening and completely at ease. Observing this experience and noticing the regular, subtle, normal breath. However it is. The ebb and flow of the breath. Just around the belly and the chest. Just this subtle movement. The breath guiding nourishing and supporting the body. And get closer to the breath. Being aware of the stillness being here in the present moment. And once again, please bring the awareness back to this body on the mat. Be aware of this entire body on the mat. Connect with this body, bringing the full awareness back to the center of the body and be aware of the environment, be aware of your surroundings. Remembering the day of the week and the time of the day. And notice the sounds once again, so notice the sounds that are furthest away from the body the sounds that are closest to the body, perhaps the sound of my voice, or the sound of your breath. The practice is coming to a close. Stay as you are, but just notice that you are grounded and you are alert and fully present. And we'll bring movement back in with the awareness of the breath. So start to take a deeper inhalation. And then a long exhalation. And then fill up the lungs, big inhalation. Exhalation. Soft inhalation. Long exhalation. And then start to wriggle the fingers. Rotate the wrists, wriggling the toes, rotate the ankles. Point and flex the feet. Begin to wake, wake the body up to start to stretch in any way that's needed. Stretching, stretching, moving this body. And hug the legs in towards you. And let's uh, turn over to the right side, or it might be your left side as you're just practicing at home. Whichever side feels comfortable. And just uh, make a little pillow with the hands and to notice how you are feeling. Notice the awareness of the body, the breath, the mind. Come up to seated, please. And bringing the palms together when you're seated. Just find a comfortable seated position. And let's take an inhalation and exhalation. Going to finish with the poor Namada chant. So listen or join in if you know this. On the inhalation. Oh, 
Pasyate Ponasya Ponamadaya Ponameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Taking a gentle bow, bring the thumbs to the eyebrow center. Gently bowing. And gently placing the palms over the forehead, over the eyes. Blinking rapidly into the hands. Blinking, blinking as fast as we can. Namaste.